Hello, I'm Aaron and welcome back to the Last Stand Gamers channel. So today we're talking about how to build a simple hinge and rotor ball turret. A cool compact design that can get your ships in and out of some sticky situations. Now these are fully controllable thanks to the latest and greatest block that we've got here, the custom turret control block. And I will say I'm not the first person to make these ball turrets and I, I won't be the last to make them. I just want to show you how to build them in a quick and effective manner in this video. So we've got ourselves a little pad well be constructing. I'm going to start by adding myself a rotor. Now the reason I'm going to go with an advanced rotor is because I want to be able to transfer supplies through it. So we're going to connect our advanced rotor with the zero facing forward towards me. Now on top of that we're going to want to attach a large hinge. Now we're going to want to pay attention to where the little nub is on the hinge. I'll show you. So you see this little nub there. So we've got the zero facing forward. We've got the hinge facing that way. This is because it's going to lead us to controlling the turret a lot easier later down the line. Now on top of this, we're going to need the custom turret controller. We're also going to need a control seat. We could do it via remote control or other ways. This is just going to be how I'm going to set up and quickly configure this. Now we need to remove this central large hinge that you can see here so let's get ourselves a large block we'll remove that out and we're going to go back to our g building menu and we're going to find ourselves a hinge so this is just a hinge part in fact it's a small hinge part and you can see it right here now you need to figure out a way especially in survival of attaching this to this point in here so i'm going to leave it facing up you can do this with a rover or a small ship just bring it in here and once it's in around this position we can connect it on up. So we're going to go to our control seat, access the menus with K, and then we're going to connect the hinge up. So back to the hinge menu and attach. Now you'll know it's attached because it'll grate itself out and it'll set itself to zero. So now we have got ourselves a hinge turret. So this converts the large grid to the small grid and it allows us all this space within this hinge itself to build a very effective turret. So to build that effective turret, we've got to remember that we need to keep on top of the piping and plumbing. We need to be able to get ammo to the turret. So we're going to build ourselves something like that. We could build one off to either side so we could have the turrets go vertically. Because we've also got to think about where the actual ports are. So for instance, if we're using the auto cannon, there's no port on the back. There's one on either side. So for this situation, having something like this would probably be one of the best options. So let's connect that up, connect that up there. Of course, you can make a little bit of a neater version, start adding some heavy armor in there to protect it. But this is just the start of building a turret. So we've got everything we need. We've got a camera, we've got turrets, we've got the hinge and the rotor. So we need to configure that now. So going back to the custom turret controller, we're going to start configuring that. So we're going to set our azimuth as the advanced rotor. We're going to set our elevation as the hinge. We're going to assign the camera that we place down. Now, that turret is fully functioning. We can adjust the settings on the speed of the velocity if we want to, of how fast it will move and respond, but we can test that out later. But next, we're going to shift-click all the auto cannons on the grid and add them in. Of course, if you've got multiple of these turrets, it's going to pay off if you start naming them. We can enable AI if we wanted on this turret, but for the moment, we are just going to remote control it. So going into here, we are now going to grab ourselves our custom control block, make sure it's all configured for a final time before we add it. Then we pop out, go to the G menu, grab ourselves the custom turret control, and we're looking for the control option right there. Now with that placed, as soon as we hit that one key on our menu, you can see we've actually we've, in, we've inverted it. So what we need to do here is set our camera back the other way. Because it's, it's, so if you do get an in, inverted turret, you can just change the camera in the other direction. So this is actually working pretty well. You can see it's firing all the auto cannons at once. And that is how you build yourself a compact ball turret out of the hinge. So let's move on to some of the other ones that I've built. And these will provide you with a bit of inspiration of what you can do. So over here we have what I like to call the Swarmer turret. This is using the hinge with missile launchers up on top. So if we just grab ourselves in here, we lock ourselves onto that and bring our camera up here. With the F9 key, you can see this fires a whole volley of missiles, far more than the standard missile launcher and can do some serious damage and it's all connected up and plumbed in so something to consider with this one is instead of using the small hinge we've used the small grid hinge 
that's an option to add to the grid so that connects into there with that little rubber bracket and then a large conveyor and that all connects into the missile launcher so that's quite simple straightforward now coming over here we have got some of our other little ball turret designs so something that you want to take into consideration is its rotation if you stick anything too far out of the ball turret when it turns it'll get caught on it so let me just make a quick example for you so if we do something like that and we try to then control our ball turret it'll get stuck you see how it gets stuck and tries to pull itself out the hinge so you're just limiting the elevation and the possibilities of engaging targets at a higher angle so that's something you want to consider so we'll remove that out and the cool thing with this turret is it's just a compact ball turret like we've already seen before but with a little bit more engineering and if we grab our character weapon let's grab ourselves just an assault rifle it's got a built-in welding and projecting system so this turret will repair itself from basic fire of course the vulnerabilities of this are this larger hinge the hinge can get broken quite quickly especially if it takes a direct hit from a missile launcher but this will allow it to survive a little bit longer because tucked behind here is this little welding system so all you have to do is bring the turret to the front let it get welded up and it pretty much covers all the blocks within the turret the welding system as you can see as i'm hitting away i think the top area there might not be well it's taking some damage it's not reforming but to make it reform we can always just bring it down a little bit further like so so with this turret as it can take the damage the only issue is when it gets to the top here the welder below doesn't quite reach it so we can cause some damage to that top area but if we jump ourselves back in we take control and rotate the turret we can see that we can repair that part of the turret or maybe some more welders it, it just depends on what sort of capabilities you want to give this and how much time you want to spend on keeping this turret particularly alive so coming over here a lot of players like to sit in their turret a bit like an anti-aircraft gun so this is kind of an option for them so as you jump in here you activate the turret controls and you can aim just by using the character in the control seat you can watch the guns fire either side of you so it's, it's it's an exciting it's a bit of a different experience rather than doing it through a camera is it a safe Pro probably not depends on the cockpit that you use if you use the heavily armored cockpit you could probably save yourself but still we've got some great elevation some great flex and movement let's just uh, bring the camera over here so you can see we've got elevation up to this point anything further than that then the the back area catches on it as it's feeding the pipes up to that central area but it's, it's a cool little cockpit it's got some nice fun little capabilities and the character gets to sit in there and watch all the firepower blast by so there's another idea for you so if we continue on i've left this one open just so you can see how it's working yes there's a space between them blocks but you can fill this with blocks you can move these gatling guns further back so you can have basically even shorter you can bring them to about this point so you can really tuck them gatling guns into that pod and give them some protection if you need to this one's been reinforced with heavily heavy armor to the front this doesn't have the welder built into it though now coming over here there's also some different ideas this is a rail gun we've got some heat vents on the side and i can jump onto this seat at the back here and what's quite cool about this if i bring my camera over here as you can see the character stands there on his little screens he has got some information on target lock he's also got a power usage bar so as this thing's recharging it can tell you how much power's using but what is quite fun about this one is if we grab ourselves our f9 key we activate our turret so we've got full aiming and accuracy but i have added a staggered fire feature to this So this means you can target multiple parts of the ship or spread the shots across the ship as you go. And you can see the vents at the side have opened up. And if we also jump back into our character perspective, you can see the power consumption is shown as on that little display down there. I quite like this one just for the fact that it, you, you're at the seat, you're at the control, and it feels like you could jump on this and defend your station or base against an incoming ship quite effectively. The smaller railguns also recharge a little bit faster. So of course you've got to work on your accuracy but you can spread them shots out over an area very cool indeed that's just an, another idea of a turret that you can build yourself this is another railgun turret but this one what i've done is pulled the railguns further back as far as they'll go without clipping and limiting how much elevation we can get and there is a camera there in the middle so there's only four in this design but it's still quite a lot of firepower and what i've done with this one is i've set it up so i can fire one at a time so I can pinpoint and target particular parts of a ship as I'm aiming. Let's jump back to that other camera and bring it over. So as I'm firing the different railguns, I can work out what I'm trying to target. 
So just another idea. You've got to, you've got to try your best to think about how to use these weapons as effectively as possible from within these turrets. So this is a little bit of a flat gun, I like to call it. As you can see, we've got a ton of artillery cannons. And once again, I've staggered fired them. So if we just jump in, you can see we've got that perspective. But if I bring the camera over, go back to that key there. If I just aim them up in that direction and activate our staggered fire via timer cubes. So you can see all the cannons firing. This would be great on some sort of small artillery platform on a rover as well. Could bombard a whole ship, do some critical damage. And because the way that these have been mounted as well, we've got access to the back so you can manually load them if you want to. You could probably retract these one further back as well if you wanted. But we've still got great elevation and just way of hitting targets. So that is just a brief overview of how to build yourself a hinge ball turret. Different ideas and how to configure them from artillery to rail guns to ones where the character is actually in the turret to ones where you're controlling it remotely. Of course the remote turret makes the most sense as you'll be flying around in a ship and you'll be in a safe area but for some of the cool little uh, base defense ones some of these man jumping ones that you can quickly access and fire straight away might be a good option it just depends on your build. Anyway I'd like to thank you guys for watching let me know in the comment section which is your favorite ball turret and what you plan on building using these little hinge turrets and new weapons.